Nobody lives well without innocence, authority, love, and values. Uh, hey, welcome back. It's Pastor Ray, and we're in the midst of raising G Ready Kids in X Ray World, which the first book on this is Seven Storms Hitting Every Single Kid in America and Seven Strategies for How to Get. And just to recap for a second, the whole goal in this is to go, we have got to shift strategies with kids from actually you going, I got to prepare the road for the child to preparing your child for any single road they're ever on. So we've been walking through what are the storms hitting your family, your kids, and almost every kid in America and the world. And there, number one was fear. Okay, growing up in a culture of fear. Number two is this premature adulthood, which, which means kids are robbed of innocence and robbed of their childhood. Third is this spiritual deconstruction. And a lot of that has to do with the impact of storm number four, the impact of mainstream media, and storm number five, the impact of social media. Well, let me introduce the sixth storm, and this may be the most complex and severe of them all. And you've all felt this storm. And the way to set it up is this. I want to take you back December 3rd. It was an evening in December in Bhopal, India, and everybody went to bed in this whole town, a few million people, feeling safe. December 3rd, 1984. They thought they were safe. And when they woke up the next morning, the worst environmental disaster in history had happened, and they didn't even know it was happened because it was odorless, tasteless, colorless, and it seeped out. A massive factory there had a gas leak, okay? And it was so big, it permeated the entire town, instantly killing almost 4,000 people and seriously hurting or harming over a half million people, and they never even knew it happened. In other words, there was something released that was so toxic, toxic, it was killing off people. I'm gonna say that again. In other words, there was something released and it was so toxic, it was killing off people. And every time I've thought about that disaster, and of course the company denied all responsibility, they finally lost about a half billion dollars in court, which is a good thing, and restitution was made to all of those victims and their families. Unfortunately, the damage was permanent for many of those people, okay? Now, what's it have to do with today's storm? Here it is, it's the storm of cultural chaos. There have been things that have been released into culture for the last seven decades, one thing per decade, and it has changed everything and made it much tougher to grow up with emotional, spiritual, and relational hope. So all I'm gonna do is walk you through all the decades since 1950 and the one thing each one. It's actually be kind of fun. Number one, in the 1950s, most of you weren't around, but if you were, it we literally, in the 1950s, everybody lost innocence, okay? And what happened is this, the 50s, the war was over, everybody came back, America took off, and Hollywood sprung up, music sprung up, rock music sprung up, and between that, Teenagers were liberated from their parents by cars for the first time. Hollywood started shaping values. Media was shaping values. And all of a sudden, it never changed. And innocence went out the window. And by the end of the 1950s, kids had seen more sex and violence in media than their grandparents ever even dreamt could exist, okay? So in the, in the 50s, we lost innocence. Now, in the 60s, Americans lost authority, okay? I was around, man. It was a very rebellious decade. There were protests. Um, uh, matter of fact, the phrase of the don't trust anyone over 30, people passed out buttons, question authority. And what happened is this, in the 1960s, we lost our respect for authority. People lost respect for government authority. They lost respect for military authority. They lost respect for authority on almost every single level. And that, by the way, has carried through. Most of those things are still true. A lot of Christians and denominations, they lost respect for biblical authority and the authority of God's word. And so they've thrown that out. Out. What's that? Where's the roots of that from? It's uh, the roots rooted in the 1960s. Now, the 50s, they lost innocence. The 60s, they lost the Then the 70s came, and the 70s, here it is, it's kind of surprising, Americans lost love. Now, um, I was around for this too. It was the free love decade. It was the free sex decade. It was the self-actualization decade. And, uh, and what happened is this, the, it was tune in and drop out decade. And really what happened is this dominated by a focus on self. 
Okay, self-actualization turned into self-absorption and the free love movement became the free sex movement. And one social scientist pointed out, here's what that did for teenagers and everybody else in the 70s. He says, in the 70s, Americans starving for love settled for sex and it's never gone back. Okay? Now, that transitioned into a whole different kind of decade in the 1980s. In the 1980s, Americans lost values. Okay? In the 1980s, Americans lost values. The number one movie for the 1980s was the movie Wall Street, starring a character named Gordon Gecko in a Wall Street character. And in that, he actually said this, greed is good. And that dominated the 80s. And, and it was basically, don't spend, don't give your money, spend your money, keep your money, build up possessions. And after in the 70s and 80s, storage unit facilities exploded and became one of the most profitable things. Why? Because people who before didn't have much stuff, by the end of the 80s, they had so much stuff, they filled up every room, they filled up every bedroom, they filled up the garage. And when that was full, they actually rented a storage unit to keep all their stuff. And values got so haywire in the 1980s. Check Christians tithing records before and after the 19 before the 1980s unselfish Christians gave and tithe after the 80s Christians don't tithe they tip whole different thing where's that rooted it's rooted in the 80s shaping values now in the 1990s Americans lost faith and as you can see on the screen the Murrah Federal Building in the heartland of America was bombed Columbine had a massive school shooting with the first one of that large major and people who had a lot of faith in the future of America began to lose faith. And why is this losing faith a big deal? It's interesting. One writer said this for the first time in human history in the 1990s, teenagers are growing up not believing that their future is going to be better than their parents. And the real problem with that is this, when you have no faith in the future, you have no power in the present. So let me run through these decades again. Americans have lost innocence, authority, love, values, faith, and then the 2000s arrived, and it was a crazy decade because the 2000s started with a thing called Y2K, which is a computer glitch that everybody will literally thought, oh, it's going to destroy the world. It's going to destroy the country. I have friends that sold their home and went to the middle of nowhere. I have friends that thought, oh man, the, it's going to end. And they stockpiled food for the, the new year uh, as the year as the 2000 came around. Um, we had friends that stuff. My wife and I didn't stockpile food because we had four young kids and a Chrysler Mini van, we had so many french fries stuffed in the seats of our van, we could live forever on that stuff. But the 2000, it started with fear and insecurity. And then 9-11 happened, and that day, all Americans lost sense of personal security. I'm not safe in my country. And Americans are really going, I feel less secure than I've ever felt. One social scientist actually said this, for the first time in human history, the wilderness feels safer than civilization. All that happened, and if you add all those up, here we go, innocence, authority, the loss of love, the loss of values, the loss of faith, the loss of, the loss of security, that equals what's going on in the last 12 years, the 2010s, all the way up to right now, including what happened with all of the COVID stuff, Americans have lost hope which is tragic. We had a, a, a severe recession is on the way. Uh, pollsters literally are saying that's reinforcing kids do not think they have a future or if they do, it's not going to be good. Uh, you have a whole generation now that is going, I am growing up faster, but now I'm gonna slow that down and I'm not really gonna end up being an adult until I'm 30 or 40. And the pro here's the problem with this. You take a look at those seven things. Innocence, authority, love, values, faith, security, and hope. Take a look at those seven things, and here's the problem, okay? Nobody lives well without innocence, authority, love, and values. Nobody lives well. Your kids are never gonna live well without those things. Nobody builds a great relationship without innocence and authority and love and values. Nobody can build a great marriage without innocence, authority, love, values, and faith, and security, and hope. And nobody can be emotionally healthy when these seven things have been ripped right out of their lives. And now what's going on is this, because everybody knows they need these things. In other words, I need authority, I need love, I need a set of values, I need faith or I'm depressed, I need security or I'm insecure, I need hope or I have no future. 
Everybody is starving for these things and nobody has any idea where to find them. That's one of the reasons you're gonna hear this more as these podcasts continue. Okay? One of the most valuable things you can do is introduce your kids to the Christian faith, to the Bible, and to a great church where they are loved. Why? Okay? Because how do you get these things back? Because now people are starving for these seven things. They can't get them back from their culture any longer. So where do they find them? So for example, I made a list here. Where do you find innocence? The forgiveness of God. Where do you find authority? The word of God. So now you have a solid foundation. Where do you find love? The love of God. Even when nobody around you seems like they care, God always does. Where do you find values? Again, the principles in God's word, okay? Where do you find faith? You find faith in the faithfulness of God, which then strengthens you and you have a future. We'll come back to faith at the very end. Uh, Americans lost security. Where do you find security? You find out in the promises of God and in the love of God and in a relationship with Jesus who said, I will never leave you, never be Or where do you find hope? You find hope in the promises of God. In other words, this next decade for people that follow Jesus Christ, including all of your kids, could be amazing because in a world that is emotionally hurting, relationally hurting, and starving for these things, and clueless where to find them, you have a solid foundation off to build that thing. And the last one of this is, ultimately, all this is this. When you strengthen your faith, you strengthen your life, you strengthen your faith. When you strengthen your faith, you strengthen your future. When you strengthen your faith, you strengthen your emotions. What a great season to bring out the best in your kids because when you help them develop a strengthened faith, all of this stuff comes flooding in. I'll close with this quick story. It was a true story in Maine. They had a beautiful valley in Maine, and at the bottom of this valley there was a beautiful little hamlet, kind of a romantic town. People vacationed there, had second homes there. Well, the state of Maine years ago came, and they said, hey, we're building a dam at the end of this valley, and the stream that runs through this thing is going to fill up this whole valley, and the va pretty soon, you know, in about two years, your town is gonna be 500 feet underwater. So we're gonna buy all your homes, and here's the other thing, you can live here as long as you can, but when the water starts to rise, we're gonna have to have you move, okay? Well, a writer went there six months later and wrote an article on it. And when the writer looked at this thing, he said, what, what happened? And he said, a beautiful town had become a dilapidated ghost town. Lawns were unmowed, weeds had sprung up, a uh, paint was not restored, everything was falling apart. And this writer, it was interesting because the writer said, this used to be the most beautiful place and it's turned into kind of a ghost town. And then he penned these words, he realized why. Why mow a lawn if there's no future? Why paint a fence if there's no future? Why maintain good relations with the neighbor if there's no future? And he penned these great words. He wrote these words. He said, where there is no faith in the future, there is no power in the present. Our young people are starving for these seven things. And faith introducing these things, which gives them all kinds of power they need in the present to say no to destructive things and yes to things that will build them up. Okay? And this is a complicated one because like that unseen gas that came in, culture has released seven things and it is coming in and there are people that are victims of it all over. Time to protect our kids from that. Hey, thanks for listening. We'll see you a little bit on the seventh storm hitting today's generation.